And we are back with Spires again. Uh, it has finally expanded to 160 and I'm gonna be covering the last 10 stages. So 155 to 160, no further jibby jabby talk. Let's go. So for 151, uh, this is the team that I use. And yeah, uh, just a disclaimer. I will not use any light and dark net fives that are unobtainable. But uh, because of the harder stages, higher power limits, uh, way less of these stages will be with obtainable units and more of them will be with just the regular net fives. I try to pick those net fives that most people would have. So for example, Juno, Galleon, like these are very popular net fives and majority of people should have them. And yeah, uh, let's go with this. So for 151, the strategy was uh, in this stage, not too many opponents do damage apart from that Windward Kyria, and the goal here was to not let her get level 7 attack, because once she gets level 7 attack, uh, she will get that invincibility permanently, uh, meaning that until you strip it or until you remove uh, the attack further than uh, level 7, she will keep that invincibility for a very long time. So basically, uh, just bring a stripper and keep removing that uh, attack buff effect. The annoying thing is that the light beetle will keep provoking you, especially uh, your stripper. So if you're having trouble with that, uh, whenever uh, your stripper gets provoked, you can simply move over uh, in the opposite direction of the beetle away from the Katarina uh, that way. Since the beetle is a melee unit, he will follow you right next to Katarina. Both of them are melee, so they'll basically stack up next to each other. After that, uh, just bring one either heal blocker or a unit that just basically provides uh, a, uh, how do you say it, any stoppage to healing. I didn't have too many good heal blockers, so I went for Sharon. Sharon has a ability to uh, either reduce recovery or she will slowly convert it to undead which will actually stop it completely as well as do damage to you so uh, that was the better option for me because water uh, Sharon also does very good damage I also have her on destroy so she's able to destroy HP and yeah once you kill uh, the Katarina there are no threats if you don't want to go for Katarina right off the bat you can go for one of the healers like uh, the Colleen or even for Bastet so she doesn't keep shielding them. And yeah, this was pretty simple. Let's go next one. Okay, 152. This was one of the easier stages. It's a full fire opponent team and uh, pretty much they rely a lot on uh, burn damage as well as uh, a silence from the Beast Monk. The way you can counter this pretty easily is with immunity and as long as you manage to kill Juno right off the bat, you will be able to just keep permanent immunity otherwise. Uh, it won't be too difficult to deal with Juno because even if you like don't strip, not don't strip but uh, even if, if you don't buff right off the bat, as soon as she uses that stripping ability, you're able to buff up with your Shushu and uh, since Juno will not be able to use that strip for quite a few seconds, you will have a decent chance to kill them. And once Juno is dead, uh, there are no more strippers in uh, the whole fight and you're able to easily deal with the rest of the units. I personally went for Rika first, then I went for the Beast Monk, basically whoever is lower HP uh, works because with immunity uh, there shouldn't be too many issues uh, dealing with the rest. And also, if you're having trouble with uh, Beast Monk silencing your Shushu before, uh, or rather right after uh, Juno strips, or before Juno strips, basically uh, the Beast Monk attacking first, or you're not being able to put up immunity in time, uh, Anavel is another uh, good option. So instead of something like a Sharon or a Galleon, uh, you could put in Anavel uh, once your Shushu gets silenced. Uh, the animal's passive will simply cleanse it because it is a CC effect and uh, once the silence is cleansed you are able to buff up with Shushu and kill them pretty easily because it, all of the units here are fire you will not lag damage too much because you can just simply go for water or anything like that. 
and 153. Uh, by the way, you will notice that I'm bringing a team uh, at first with higher power. I'm doing this just to get the bonus uh, from the power limit. Once inside, I simply switch to my actual team. Uh, that way, you're able to both get the bonus as well as use the team that you want. So, 153, I went in with this, but the final team was Judon, Shushu, and Nadin Ha. In this stage, uh, I mean, once you buff immunity, there isn't too much that can stop you either. They will receive a lot of nasty buffs, especially the Megan is able to give attack buff and attack speed up. Uh, the Dark Chimera is able to buff up his own critical rate and uh, elemental damage, I believe it is, or critical damage. So, do have a stripper in there. I would highly recommend it, something like a Juno, Tiana, Chibu, whatever. Uh, but apart from that, uh, once you have immunity up, uh, they will not have any way to breach through you. Do have a decent tank in the front line. For Cliffs, of course, uh, you will be the tank. If you're Orbi Akina, try to get another unit that can tank it pretty easily. Since uh, this is one of the higher damage stages, as you can see, my Water Cliff was struggling uh, even by lowering their attack, their attack speed, all of that and having a damage bonus, so the sooner you are able to strip all of those nasty attack buffs, crit damage buffs, uh, the easier the stage will be, and apart from that, once you kill, I personally targeted Dark Chimera and the Light Imp first, uh, but once those two are down, pretty much nothing will do damage, and it's gonna be an easy stage, let's go next. And 154, again this is one of the easier stages in the Spire's Dissertation. The basic strategy behind this is they only have a single stripper on their team, so uh, the sooner you kill it, the faster you will be able to deal with it. What I would highly highly recommend in this stage is bringing a stripper. Juno works amazingly because there are 3 buffs, you will be stripping like 5 opponents and in most cases, as you can see, she will get more mana than she actually used for the skill, especially after uh, a successful strip. As you can see, uh, she was on 4 mana, she stripped and she got 6 mana back. So that will really help, especially dealing with all of those, uh, what they called, uh, annoying damage reduction buffs. Once you kill the fire uh, magical archer, this will be a completely free stage because First of all, they won't have any strip, so you are able to completely counter them with immunity. Even without immunity though, uh, they will not do much. I mean, the fire Hell Lady is really not that high of a damage unit. Uh, the Dark Vagabond will be annoying, but all he will do is provoke, so really not that scary. The Water Hug, again, he just buffs, he doesn't do any damage pretty much, and Fire Lizardman could be annoying if you have buffs, but again, he really doesn't do much, so just target uh, the Fire Magical Archer, uh, strip those buffs as soon as you receive them, because uh, with them, you'll have a lot of trouble doing damage. Unless you're bringing something like a Magical Archer in my case, uh, that way it won't impact your damage, because they don't crit, they uh, make use of those, uh, what they're called, a weak point attacks and weak point attacks are not critical attacks so that anti-crit is actually beneficial to you in order to do more damage because it lowers the chance uh, to actually get a critical hit so if you're running a magical archer as your main dps uh, sure strip is not that needed but again uh, it will lower the damage that they do and it will basically increase the damage that your summoner does that your other units will do so yeah uh, stripper, immunity, target, fire, archer, done. Easy. Let's go next one. And now possibly the hardest stage of this rotation, 155. So, uh, this is the stage where I no longer was able to get the power bonus, so we were going no power bonus, regular uh, fights. The super annoying part about this is they have a stripper, uh, Chi strips, as well as the Undyne has a strip on her first skill. They also have immunity and they also have cleansing, healing, so all of the annoying part and the worst part about this stage is they have that nasty undead effect. Uh, the problem with that is you could in technically cleanse it and heal right after with units like uh, Camilla, Annabelle, Ariel, all of that jazz. However, in most cases you will stack more uh, debuffs 
then uh, you are able to cleanse because most cleansers will only do one or two unless you're running something like a Vela Jewel, the Fire Archangel, but even then they have strips so that immunity won't last long. The key win component here was uh, the Win Sky Dancer Chisun. Because her second skill isn't a heal, but actually a HP balancing uh, skill, you are able to bypass uh, that nasty undead effect and simply heal up. Yeah, I think this was a failed attempt. Uh, I'll have to go into the end where I actually got a winning attempt. So yeah, uh, this took quite uh, some time to figure out. Where is it? Come on. There we go. Uh, so yeah. Basically, I targeted the Dark Okulga right off the bat, and with Cleave I was able to tank it out. With Water Cleave you're able to lower the damage a lot, as soon as they get either attack buff or immunity, I switched to my Juno uh, to strip all of that. Once uh, the Dark, uh, what she called, Okulga was gone, uh, the stage was much easier, the Undead was gone, so uh, units like the Chesson's first skill, or uh, Juno was able to heal more efficiently, at least the other units. Uh, for Cliff, I still used uh, the Chesun, but uh, I noticed that once the Dark Call Girl was gone, uh, I didn't even need Chesun to be on Soul Link because I was able to heal up with uh, the other units. Again, you won't have cleanse because of that uh, beneficial effect of the removal block, but Chesun should be able to cleanse enough. If you're not a cleave, you will need a frontline unit that can sustain and you can heal them up with Juno while you're doing damage or you're doing support, cleanse, all of that. But yeah, uh, the main win con behind this was the sooner I eliminated the uh, Dark Occult Girl, uh, the rest of my units were able to get rid of that undead a little bit more easily, uh, meaning that they were able to heal up. And once they are healed up, my Chasun was able to do more HP balancing because it balances based on uh, the lower HP unit as well as Chasun's HP. So if Chasun is low, she will not balance uh, that high herself. But if you keep uh, your Chasun healthy, uh, you will be able to balance your frontline unit higher as well. And as you can see, uh, managed to pass it without too much trouble. Once I built Chasun, just a few attempts and it was done. Okay, so for 156, uh, the strategy behind it was quite simple. This is a full silence uh, unit stage, so uh, there's quite a few counters to it. I do recommend bringing an immunity buffer because they only have a single stripper, that is the Dark Bomber. And once the Dark Bomber is uh, dead, you will be able to upkeep permanent immunity without any danger at all. Again, they don't really have too much protection to... Uh, like reduce the damage that you do or heal up. Kumar has a single target heal, but if you stack a lot of debuffs like I did, especially the undead, uh, he will not be able to cleanse and heal through all of them, and once the Cobalt Bomber is dead, uh, you are able to just keep permanent immunity and not worry about their damage or CC at all. Uh, I brought Anavel here, she really helps with uh, just in case like you get stripped and silenced by the Dark Bomber. Uh, since his strip and silence lands in the same skill, in the same attack, uh, as soon as you're stripped, your Ana will, will be able to cleanse your units and you can follow up with either a Shushu or Animal heal. Uh, definitely not necessary, but I just found that it works a little better that way. And for damage, uh, whatever you bring uh, will work here since they only have a single a healer that is a single target heal, they will not be able to out heal you in any way. For me, I brought the uh, water magical archer, you can bring anything else, something like a Nadinha, Argen, uh, all of these should work just fine. As long as they're staying in the backline and are not getting hit by the frontline attacks, uh, all of them should work pretty fine. And actually very similar concept for the next stage, 157, uh, again, this is a bomber stage, so the Gianna, the Dark Oracle, does have an AoE strip, however, 
uh, once they land that strip they simply lack the harmful effects to follow up so even if your uh, team does get stripped uh, the most they will do is like a stun or a bomb in that case you can uh, just simply pull up immunity back again because uh, Shushu's immunity is applied whenever a unit gets uh, to full HP. In most cases, uh, your units will not have heal block. The heal block they have uh, lands very rarely. I think it landed like once in the whole fight. And even then you are able to cleanse it with Anavel or any other cleanser. After that, once uh, the Gianna is dead, uh, the Joker does have a single target strip. However, it's simply not that consistent and will not be enough to really make any damage to your team and once that is done uh, it's pretty much a gg i chose to kill Sierra first because uh, she was a boss type as well as she just had uh, better harmful effects less hp so i thought whatever i'll kill Sierra. it's really not a threat that dark joker but if you're really scared of the harmful effects uh, being applied because he does have a strip still you can focus on the dark joker next once the Gianna and dark joker are gone no harmful effects will be applied to you as long as you have a shushu and it's gonna be a gg and now probably the second hardest stage i would say in this rotation uh the dark pioneer as well as two bastets and two Rika. so yeah uh this one was pretty brutal especially since uh, their shield cooldowns are extremely low i think they're like a few seconds only uh there are a few ways to go about it the way i did is with nadin has uh, block beneficial effects as well as uh, the undead that sharon provides so if you look at the amount of debuffs on this desert queen this is the main way how i meant to do the stage i took water cleave I took Sharon because she applies a lot of debuffs. I took uh, Nadinha because she applies quite a few debuffs. Yes, they do have a cleanse with uh, those Epikian priests. However, uh, the cleanse they have is a single uh, effect. And once you start stacking 10 of them, you may get unfortunate RNG. But in most cases, you will be able to just out uh, debuff them and once they have a lot of debuffs they'll have a very hard time cleansing the correct one and the correct one they'd have to cleanse is either the undead or the block beneficial effects as long as they're not able to cleanse those uh, you will be able to out dps them at first i didn't take any healer actually so i just thought whatever uh, they will be able to survive Again, as you can see, I do not have my uh, monster follow like that whistle option at the bottom, right? Uh, because I wanted my archers to stay in the back uh, and not get hit. Once you're a bit lower HP, you can switch out a healer like I did right here. Uh, heal up, uh, switch them back out and go for more DPS because you will need quite a bit of DPS. If you're a cliff user, you can protect yourself with uh, the wind element later on, once uh, those annoying shielders are gone. And yeah, you can switch out, as you can see, I switched out Shushu, I healed up, I switched them back out, and uh, I go along and DPS them a bit more. And this was a close fight, uh, if you're able to get a bonus, you should be able to get it way easier for me it took like until the last five seconds i even switched to fire cliff so he gets a crit damage buff uh but yeah uh block beneficial effects and undead uh was the key winners here so if you have a sharon highly recommend if you have nadinha a very good option you can try to go around it with tiana as well like constantly stippling buffs i didn't have her build but i also know that i'm not an orbia user so i will be lacking damage if i use tiana because i mean you use tiana you use a setup like a galleon for example and you only have one unit in that case a bit lower in the damage so yeah i just chose to do it this way didn't take too many attempts i think like two three attempts and i was done so it is sort of like a safer team i suppose okay and 159 so this was one of the more annoying stages as well i wouldn't say it was particularly super hard it's just that uh the units they have uh, were very nasty uh, when dealing and they involved a lot of rng so 
it was a bit difficult to deal with them but yeah uh, for this one, uh, the main goal was of course to go for the Dark Raven so he doesn't destroy everyone's HP. Once the Dark Raven is dead, uh, the game will be pretty simple after that, I suppose. I mean, if you are a frontline summoner like Cleave, you will have a lot of HP destroyed, but in this case, uh, I found that after the Dark uh, Raven was dead, I switched to the Wind Summoner that way. Uh, you are able to almost permanently keep up the shield from the first skill and that shield uh, allows you to prevent that nuke damage that a Molong, the Water Panda, is able to do. I don't recommend bringing immunity in here because uh, Wind Ninetales is able to strip it even with her basic attacks so there really isn't any point. Uh, the reason why I brought Shasun here is First of all, attack buff to both of my archers, so increases their damage a lot. And because you will be dealing with a lot of heal block, as she, again, she is able to bypass it and balance out the HP uh, even through it. That way, uh, either your cliff or any frontline unit that you have will be able to be topped up throughout the fight. If you cleave, of course, go for wind cleave. Trust me, it's way, way better than the water or even the fire ones. I've tested quite a bit since I had some fails in this stage. But yeah, uh, Chasun, definitely the way to go. And then bring a lot of damage because they will not be able to hit your front line at all. They have single target abilities and they're very short range. So uh, your archers will just have a free time uh, dealing with uh, whatever opponents you're facing. And now 160, the final stage. I was actually very surprised that people were saying this was one of the harder stages, especially since, I don't know, it might be my bias, but I got it in uh, the first try. Uh, if you look at the team, uh, they do not have a single strip. So as long as you have Shushu on Soul Link, you're able to permanently uh, buff up immunity and they'll quite literally not be able to do any damage to you. Uh, apart from that, uh, they also don't have a single cleanse, so uh, like the most they will have is defense buffs and uh, that shield, so you can bring a stripper to deal with them even easier, I suppose. Uh, like if I brought a something like Juno over Tessarian, I suppose, uh, the fight would have been over much much faster, but again, two archers and they will pretty much not be able to do anything you can try to utilize a, a buff block in this but yeah just as long as you do enough damage you'll be able to kill them pretty easily heal block or undead does help a lot because there is quite a bit of healing in there uh and yeah i'm really not sure how people struggle with this but as you can see uh, I killed the Mammoth, I could have killed the backline, one of the buffers, it would have been easy, even easier, but this was my first attempt and I just didn't know what to expect, and yeah, it just worked out. I think I even said it to auto maybe, oh no, actually no, I probably didn't, but yeah, as you can see, you just kill one of them, one after the other, and yeah, super simple this one actually. 160, the final stage, and it was one of the more easier ones, and you receive the final reward. Uh, not the cloud come to us give us the cloud please uh, this panther is ugly yeah but yeah that's about it for spires and peace